What's up, Foundation? What's up, YouTube? Man, it's me, your big partner, Cartoon One, man. Man, I'm back again. Um, I went live earlier today, and um, I was telling y'all about a lot of uh, different things that was going to take place in the Foundation Nation as far as, you know, the website going up in a couple of more days, um, the memberships, uh, the, all this, uh, the merch, a lot of different things going on. And um, I was speaking on, um, I know uh, my manager, she's, my, she, she's like my um, assistant and she's my manager. Y'all seen her today. That's my homegirl, Tonita. Um, we was I was telling you about different um, things you're going to get. And one of the things I was talking about is certain like, certain like type stories that I'm going to tell for the members versus not putting it out like I'm putting it out now. It's a lot of stories I put out, but now that I got the membership thing going up and finna get crunk, um, it's a lot of stories that I'm only going to tell for the members. Um, the story I'm finna tell you tonight is one is like one of the stories that you can kind of catch that, uh, will be over there. If you, if you are a member, um, Ooh, woo. Man, that's that Perrier water. I drank that. I love that sparkling water, man, that Perrier. But anyway, um, this is one of the things I uh, kind of, it's going to look, it's, it alludes to when I be speaking to the youngsters and I be trying to let them know uh, the, the directions that they should go versus the directions I went when I was young. Like I say, I didn't have nobody when I was young to talk to me then the way I try to talk to the youngsters now. Listen, um, back when I was coming up, the, the, the sentiment that they have now, you know, all these gang preventions and, you know, don't do this, don't do that, stop, stop, stop. It wasn't like that when I was coming up. No, it was gang, 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 gang. They, you know, they right down today, they hollering gang, gang. No, they playing. What this junk that they got going on now today is pure jokeism pure jokeism is uh you know what i'm saying it, this 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 cripping and blood thing it has been turned into a uh uh uh, uh, uh industry you know what i'm saying it, it it's been made mainstream it's been um it's been commercialized it's been made funny it's been made fun for people a whole around the world not just in, around LA, not just around the United States, but around the whole world. People have taken to it and they doing what they want to with it. And basically they made it a joke, man. It's so watered down now that, you know what I'm saying? It's really not even worth, you know, having nothing to do with, man. Now for those, the youngsters that's coming up now that are getting into it, they don't know. They think that this is what it is. They have no idea. No, 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 my friend. No, 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 my friend. Um, back in my time coming up, uh, uh, South Central LA was like this here. Imagine the, the the closest thing I can come to giving you a good analogy of it is imagine, imagine thousands upon thousands of C Max running around of crip max running around you know what i'm saying now i'm not saying crip mac is the hardest dude on the planet no i'm not saying that i'm not speaking on his hardness but i'm speaking on his mental state and not i ain't talking about the crazy i'm talking about the mental state the mental state that he takes the mental outlook that he takes toward the gang life you feel what i'm saying the vocabulary the walk the talk the color code the whole hookup you know what i'm saying that is the mentality that everybody had back in them 70s, late 70s and, and all through the 80s. That was the mentality, man. That's what dudes were kids. That's how people were. You know what I'm saying? And so with that, you had a lot of dudes that was that was straight up monsters, killers, you know what I'm saying? Riders. So imagine them whether they was blue or whether they was red. So imagine them how they were back then if, with that C-Mac type mentality toward the gang, the way he is toward the gang banging, 
but they was down to get up and do something. Instead of just talking, they was down to get up and do something, man. So that was the environment that we came up in. Wasn't nobody talking, no, stop, don't quit. No. They was beating you up, making you. If you lived there, you was from there. No ifs, ands, or buts. Or you was going to get the business. Straight up. Straight up. You was going to get beat up whether you wanted to or not. And after they beat you up, the homie's going to tell you, yeah, homie, you from the set now. And that was that. Simple as that. So anyway, um, how to start it. This is a story, man. It's a real quick one about how a person could be so dedicated to the street life that he put it ahead of his family. Now, I told y'all a story last year sometime about when uh, my sister had to come bail me out. I got caught with a carload full of homies. I got caught with a carload full of homies by the one time, and um, we was took we got took to jail. And um, we went to the glass house. For those who not old enough, um, the glass house was a, a, a substation in LA called the Parkinson Center. And they would send you, you know, you would go to the glass house, you know, and, you know, depending on what area of LA you got caught in, they would send you to the glass house, from the glass house, boom, to the county jail. Um, and I was telling you about how I got sent to the glass, I got popped, and they sent me to the glass house. Um, and my sister and a dude named Judah Bean from Fortray Hoover, uh, came and bailed me out, came and got me up out of there real quick. What I didn't tell y'all, what I didn't tell y'all is what I lost that night. Um, I tell y'all all the time about, a lot of times when I give y'all the stories, sometimes it'd be a lot of stuff I leave out. Don't need to be spoke on, don't need to be said, or either I don't want to speak on it or don't want to say anything about it. You know what I'm saying? Due to personal reasons, um, due to statute of limitations, due to other people... Um, not wanting to be on the scene about certain things. Boom. So, you know, I'll give you the story, but, I, you know, I might change the names and I might leave stuff out that I don't need out on the airwaves or don't want out on the airwaves. Sometimes it's going to be a need to not put it out there. Sometimes it'll be a want not to put it out there. So what I'm telling you tonight was a want. I didn't want to speak on it. But uh, I'm going to speak on it now just to give you a quick glimpse into what Dudes who bind into the membership on the Foundation Nation, they'll hear this type of stuff. A lot of stuff from certain stories that I deleted or left out, omitted, I'm going to give it to you in the raw, to the best of my ability. Long as, it, as long as it's not along the lines where someone could probably get in trouble about it. But other than that, I, I'm going to give it to you in the raw. Um, on that story, man, listen. Like I say, back when I was coming up, man, we were so dedicated to that gang life. We put it before everything. Uh, you know, nine out of 10 real stomp down gang bangers back in them 70s and 80s. The set came before your family. The set came before uh, friends, loved ones or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, you would put it before your girl. You put it before your kids. You put it before moms, pops, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, grandmama. You put the set ahead of all of that. Because it was the set, man. It was the set. That's all we knew. Whatever three, four, five, six little blocks that we claimed as our own, that we said belonged to us, man, we protected it. We took it to heart. We was willing to die. We was willing to kill. We was willing to go to jail. We was willing to do whatever for these, for these few little streets that we called the hood. We was willing to go all the way down through there, man. So on to the story even more in depth. Um, that night, well, earlier that day, man, I was with, I was with my girl, and um, she was pregnant at the time. 
She was pregnant at the time. And um, but she was having difficulties. Look, dog, leave that cat alone. She was having difficulties. And um, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, you know, I'm not no doctor. I don't know what to do. I don't know, you know, I didn't know. But her thing was, I don't know if it was mental, but her thing was she just wanted me to be around her. She didn't want to go through the problems that she was going through with this pregnancy on her own. She wanted me there. But now, you know, the way I was back then, my mentality, I wasn't, I, wasn't, I was not finna sit at this house holding hands, kicking cans with her all day and night. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, 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 it just wasn't in me. Man, look, that instinct was not in me back then. Um... You know, I wasn't the type to sit and rub bellies and, you know, baby, baby, it's going to be okay. And, you know, all that running, running to the kitchen, getting this to eat, that to eat, or to the store to get this, that to eat. I wasn't with it. I wasn't with it. I want to go to the set. I want to go to South Park. You know what I'm saying? I want to go right on the walls, do drive-bys and all this old other stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Hang out. You feel me? I'm a, I've been up all night creasing my 501s, you know, shining my, my, my biscuits and my Stacey Adams, ironing my Pendleton. You know what I'm saying? I want to put my G clothing wear on and go out and do my due diligence for Eastside Avalon. I want to do that. I wasn't studying no, no, no babies, no pregnancies, no none of that. Of course, you know, I mean, I just wasn't a total monster, but... I just wanted to go, man. My priorities was messed up back then. I'm talking about they was messed up. Avalon came first. That was my priority. I didn't know any better. I am a product. The name of my book, when okay, it, that's going to finna be published. It's, gonna, it's called A Product of My Environment. Because that's what I was. That's what I became. A product of my environment. The, the environment that I was raised in, the way of life that I was raised in, that what was going on, and I took to it like a fish to water. So, with that being said, I was not I was not down for um sitting around holding hands. You know what I'm saying? Babysitting her and doing all this so stuff. So now as time went on that day, um, you know, talking to certain homies on the phone, like, come man, we finna woo woo woo. So now I got to go. I want to go to the set. I want to go. I want to go to the set. So now here it is. She begged me not to go, not to go, not to go. But, man, I didn't want to hear that mess. I left. I told her I'd be back. Just be cool. Don't trip. I'll be back. Coming back. But now, on some real talk, I'm coming back. But now I didn't have no intentions on coming back. No time soon. Because in my mind, wasn't nothing wrong with her. You know what I'm saying? She just crying and whining. You know how they, you know, dudes have been in my ear talking about, you know how they emotions go to running and hormones go to tripping. And she wanted me there. I did know she was having some difficulties, though, certain type pains and stuff. But I wasn't tripping, man. I'm just thinking it's some woman stuff. So I left. I went to the set. I went to the set kicking it man we out there doing what we do man did you know what i'm saying Look, doing what we do um we in the, and now that's when you hear me about the story about you know what i'm saying when the one time got on me and the homies it's me and about four more i'm about four five of the little homies in the car feet heads hands hanging out all that you know what i'm saying <clears throat> we going to do shoot them up shoot them shoot shoot them out shoot them up shoot them down shoot them left shoot them right you know what I'm saying? Shoot them this way, that way, whatever thing we was doing. That's what we was going to do that night. Um, the one time ended up getting on us, as you know, I told you the one time getting on, er, we bust, I think we bust the uh we bust the uh left coming down San Pedro, coming down San Pedro, we bust the right. And we were going toward Avalon, but we was coming down 43rd. And uh, we heading toward Avalon, but the one time get on us. I told you the one time get on us. So uh, 
you know, or, I, you know, uh, uh, just enough to throw the heat. So once the heat was thrown, you know, I pulled over. I'm the driver. We threw the heat. Police get us. Boom. Now, I'm the oldest one in the car. I've always had a thing for my young homeboys, man. That's why all my little homies. Now, my little homies that I'm talking about now, they in their early, they in their early fifties and late forties today. But back then, they were numbered like uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 at the most. It was a carload full of us. I was in my, I was in my mid twenties. <clears throat> But I've always been the big homie that loved his little homies. I never left them out. You know what I'm saying? I always put my little homies on a pedestal. Because I always knew that they were the future. I always knew if you didn't train them right, that they was going to come up wrong. And so I did my due diligence. I would sit my little homies down. Man, we might be in the park. It might be me. And it might be 12 or 13 of my little baby, baby homies, man, and I'm out, I'm giving them the game, telling them what YA like, telling them what prison like, and just giving it to them, man, talking to them. You know, I was instilling it in them, letting them know how to go left, how to go right, how to go up, how to go down, you know, when to go, when not to go, what to do when you do go, and if you don't go, how to get ready, prepare yourself to go the next day. And they loved me for that, man, you know what I'm saying, because I, I wasn't the type to feel I was, you know what I'm saying, I was I was too OG to kick it with them little youngsters. No, they used to love to see me coming, homie. When I drive down the street, they they run out, flag the car down, tune, tune, big homie cut, what's up? I'll pull over and kick it with the homies, man. You know, kick it, wrestle with them. You know, I'm a big old dude back then, you know what I'm saying? It might be four, five of them. They we in the middle of the park. They want to wrestle me down. I'm I'm throwing the little youngsters, you know what I'm saying? They 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 rolling, getting up, coming back, getting at me, you know what I'm saying? Fun. Having fun with my little homies, man. I loved them. I loved them. Still love them today, and they still love me. <clears throat> but anyway, we got we got cracked that night, man. And um, the police, I, I, I the police kept me. They let everybody else go, which is what I wanted. Man, let them go, homie. You know what I'm saying? Let them go. They kept me. Um, I end up. Staying in overnight, my sister and uh the dude Judah Bean from Fulcher who I get I get uh, they um they come get me, they come get me some hours some way hours later but you know it was already late, but they end up coming to get me. They end up coming to get me. Um, during the process, during the process of me being in that jail. My baby mama had a miscarriage. She had a miscarriage. They had to rush her to the hospital. My mama called the hospital and they had to rush her to the hospital. I'm in jail. What can I do? I don't know about it. I don't find out about it till I get out. I didn't find out about it till I get out. And I would and I, as I'm thinking about it, yeah, it, it I wasn't even I wasn't in there. I, it was some hours. You know what I'm saying there? Some hours. But I'm, I don't know if she had the miscarriage while I was in the glass house or while I was running the streets earlier. Because, see, they, it, they wouldn't have been able to reach me anyway. They had to beat me back then on a beeper. And the beeper might have been beeping. I don't know. So, you know, we, wasn't no cell phones. Wasn't no cell phones. So anyway, when I find out about when I finally find out about it, boom, shoot, to, shoot, shoot to the hospital. It was a done deal, homie. Little man was gone. I was hurt. Not as hurt as what some people may think because I didn't know no better. I didn't know how to be hurt. You know what I'm saying? For, you know, for something like that. You know, I, I just don't know. But, you know, to this very day, to this very day, she blames me for that. She said, I'm the, I'm the reason she had that miscarriage. It's my fault for leaving her 
in her time of need to go out and gangbang and hang, hang, hang with the fellas. Back then, I'm like, man, you tripping. You tripping. You don't know what you're talking about. Back then. But now, I can look at it a little different. I can look at it a little different and say, if I could turn back the hands of time, would I do it different? If I could turn back the hands of time, knowing then what I know now, I never would have left the house, homie. Never would have left the house. If I could turn back the hands of time, knowing then what I know now, I probably would have packed all my stuff up and just clean moved out of L.A. way back in the 80s and got somewhere and had me a, and started me a, a better life than the life that I end up leading. Hey, man, we do stuff. We make decisions, man, whether decisions are bad, whether decisions are good. We make decisions in our life all in the name of the set. All in the name of staying down with the gang banging, and then it, then when you get then when you hit your 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 fifties and your sixties, you realize, man, what, what, man, I, I you mean to tell me, here it is, I didn't, I've been living a life that I didn't have to live. I've been I was living it because you didn't know no better. I done been through all what I've been through to just wake up one day, here it is, almost 60 years old, to wake up and realize, man, this S-H-I-T ain't nothing. But we did it, man. We did it. And they still doing it today. We was gone in the membrane. We was gone back then, y'all. These youngsters up today, they not as gone now as we were then. You know, these youngsters of the day, they scary. They, 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 as they say, as I've been hearing them say on YouTube, they had dropped their flag so goddamn fast that it ain't nothing nowadays. But back then, wasn't no such thing. Wasn't no uh -uh, dropping nothing. You was with it. He just won't be still, y'all. It's the Cartoon Wiggle Show, you know? But anyway, man, I just had to put that little, that, 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 leave the cat alone cat don't get no peace man that little dog just want to uh, aggravate it to shreds but anyway it's me your big partner man cartoon one I represent the gangsters homie y'all stay safe and stay above ground by any means necessary i'm out peace